People of the realm, season 6 is well and truly over and just as we've waited years to see Bran feel up a tree, we've also waited for someone to escape from under the tyrannical rule of Danny's thumb. Today's video is all about Dario Naharis. Westerosi and his Sosi. For those of you yet to visit the Citadel and read any of the fine works of George R. R. Martin, fear not, for this video contains my ponderings and predictions based on the show alone. So in case you've been hiding under a rock or imprisoned by the Faith of the Seven, allow me to get you up to speed with dashing Dario Naharis. Dario is the leader of the Second Sons and now de facto ruler of Marine. He's come from humble beginnings, he has a whore as a mother who actually sold him into slavery, there he learnt his trade in the fighting pits and eventually won his freedom from said slavery. That's right, his mum sold him into slavery. Dario has actually joined the Second Sons after that and promptly rose to command it after removing the heads of the two previous captains and this was in an attempt to prove his worth to Daenerys Targaryen outside the walls of Yunkai. He continues to woo Danny, lavishing her with compliments and his words. His code is an odd one for a man of his profession, he won't kill an innocent, just an enemy who attempts to kill him and he also won't sleep with prostitutes. Now whether these are true or not we don't actually know, but the one thing that does prove its worth to the Dragon Queen is his plan to take Yunkai, to sneak into the side gates with Jorah and Grey Worm to open the city to Danny's army. The city does fall quickly and its slave army soon surrenders. Now with reinforcements the army continues on and so does Dario with the wooing, but not before he's had a facelift and has had a chance to grow a beard. This new Dario appears to have more success when a flowerful flirtation yet again brings him to the forefront of Danny's attention. Now when they arrive at Marine, Danny asks for a champion and then promptly turns down Grey Worm as he's the commander of the Unsullied. She turns down Barristan Selmy as he's won more single combats than anyone in the history of Westeros, Essos or Planetos and she needs him close by which seems odd. And Jorah, well she kind of had to turn him down because he's her most trusted friend and advisor and clearly she turned him down to remind him that he's well and truly in the friend zone. So up pipes Dario Naharis who says he'll beat the champion as he himself is of little worth to her. He's about as subtle as the mountain popping eyeballs, but she falls for it and Dario defeats this champion rather easily. The city once again falls and uh, after that Dario proves that he is worth more than words. He boasts that his second sons have captured 93 ships of the Miranese navy and this is all without being ordered. Now this was enough for him to get that notch finally in his bedpost that he's been yearning for and Danny soon enjoys his company for the night. Later on he and his star are tasked with delivering a message to the Yunkish who have rebelled, the message appears to have done the trick and so Darian continues to bed Danny, whilst also assisting Grey Worm in a murder investigation against the sons of the Harpy. Later we see him become somewhat lackadaisical and he's actually indirectly responsible for Barristan Selmy deciding to take a stroll on the night of his murder, which made me bloody rage. This puts Dario in an even closer position as he now presents her with strategies unopposed. Firstly, you can pull back to the Great Pyramid or simply round up all the Great Masters and kill them. That's how you deal with this, insurgents. And his most infamous quote so far is all rulers are either butchers or meat. So then that brings us to the Great Pit of Daznak, the grand spectacle of the fighting pit Except the sons of the Harpy strike, they have better ideas, they want to kill them all, but Danny is saved. First by Jorah Mormont with a well placed spear, but eventually it actually takes Drogon to swoop on in and whisk her off to safety. Now with Grey Worm still injured from letting us all down and letting Barris and Selmy down, and Tyrion actually having more skill with his tongue than he does with tracking, it's left to Dario and Jorah the Explorer to go out and find Danny and her missing dragon and they find her in the funniest of places with the Dothraki so she's gone full circle. Except in Essos, it only takes two good men to complete a mission 
Not 20, Ramsey. So Danny turns all crazy again and she burns the leaders of the Dothraki and Dario, well he's left a little hot under the collar, he likes what he sees. Onwards, back to Marine, but once again, trouble is afoot, it's under siege. But Danny, she, she actually wanders off before she reaches Marine and she leaves the Dothraki to eat grass while she brings Drogon to heal. Dario in the meantime is given the command of the Dothraki, his single task is to charge the gates of Marine and end the Master's siege. Having successfully defeated the Masters, Danny is finally, finally I say, off to Westeros with her entire army, except for Dario and the Second Sons. And they've been given a rather pathetic Dear John letter, effectively saying, Dario, you are good to look at, you're excellent to the touch, you do your job well, but right now you're worthless to me. You bring no alliance, you bring no grand armies with you, and no prestige, you will not help me solidify my reign in Westeros, so for now, I'm going to leave you to be the caretaker of Marine. I'm going to leave you with 2,000 men, good luck. Oh poor Dario, the only thing he wanted was to see her win back her kingdom and be with her to the end of the time. That's right, isn't it? Well you know what, my friends, I think that's bollocks. So now it's time for my prediction, now that we're all caught up. Dario Naharis, commander of the Second Sons, ruler of Marine and layer of the Dragon Queen, has always been self-serving. He's killed his captains to gain favour with Danny, but why? Because he knows the winning side when he sees it. 2,000 mercenaries and a slave army would not have defeated the Mother of Dragons and her Unsullied. So he receives not only a promotion, but effectively becomes part of Danny's small council with one simple act of two beheadings. His plan was to seduce Danny, which he did rather too quickly and easily, but we are led to believe that marriage is potentially what he wanted. Now Dario, Dario is a smart man, he knew from the get go that there would be no marriage. After all, his mother was a whore, his family name is not noble, he comes from the dust, from the mud, from the earth. So he set an altogether more realistic goal, become the leader of Marine, effectively running Slaver's Bay. Being a former slave, the target made sense. Being a businessman with all these mercenaries, you can think, what is a mercenary after all? It is a sword for hire, if the financial incentives are clear. He learns his trade in the fighting pit, and yet he's still happy to attend the reopening of fighting pits. At the end of the season, although weakened, Marine is secure, it's ready to prosper again. All that were in a position of power, the great masters, the sons of the harpy, are apparently gone. The vacuum of power is evident and Dario Naharis is grinning like a Cheshire bloody cat. But it brings up a question, will Dario betray Danny? Well firstly, think how can he? Marine have very few ships left and a poor fighting force outside of the second sons. So military betrayal seems unlikely at this moment, unless Dario was to join forces with someone else. Another possible scenario is that Dario carves out his own path in Essos, perhaps crowns himself ruler or king of all of Slaver's Bay, but as I've mentioned before, he's a realist. Can a small mercenary company hold a city as large as Marine and keep the peace across Slaver's Bay? Maybe. But not for long. So my prediction is that Dario will sell the city, as he's been known to do already. He'll sell it for personal gain. Don't forget he told Danny about Yunkai's weaknesses and then exploited it, effectively gifting Danny the city. So he has the means to sell a city, he's shown that he's done it before, he is a sellsword after all. His motive is clear, personal gain and possible ill feeling towards Danny. And in season 7, I think he's going to get the opportunity. So if Dario was to sell the city to someone, I'd expect to see him invested in men and ships, and eventually we may even see him in Westeros. The question I pose is, who is Dario going to be fighting for? Is he going to be fighting for Danny, or will he turn cloak himself and fight for Cersei, because her and the Lannisters are willing to pay, or will it be someone else? all together. Another thing that's crossed my mind is, 
Dario could very well be captured, maybe by Euron. And could we see the demise of such a character? The fire's a theory, a growing cold for now. I'm really looking forward to seeing what Dario does next, and I want to know, not only what do you think about this video, do you still want to see more of these character season 7 prediction videos? And let me know what you think is going to happen with Dario, and if you think he'll actually sell Danny out. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. As always, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and comment, as it really helps. If you're new to the channel and recently subscribed, thank you very much for your support, and for everyone who's supported us so far, you know your legends. So gather your fur, down your favourite swill, and be on your way. But remember, I'm the Northlander. You know nothing, and neither do I.